Allora, cominciamo eh, facendo introduzione in italiano, poi dopo, dopo no, passiamo il microfono al nostro ospite, passeremo all'inglese. E va benvenuti a questo eh, 158esimo mercoledì di Nex, il primo del 2023. E, eh, abbiamo ricominciato da settembre a fare gli incontri in presenza, oltre a essere collegati online, qualcuno è collegato ci segue, poi l'incontro verrà registrato, per cui... Nella fase di discussione tenete presente che eh, tutto verrà registrato e poi pubblicato online, per cui siate ne consapevoli. E allora, questo incontro di Nexa, eh, la consuetudine è di iniziare facendo un giro di tavolo per una rapidissima presentazione, in maniera tale che a noi presenti in questa sala si conoscano a vicenda, dopodiché presenterò il nostro ospite e inizierà la sua lezione, che durerà circa un'ora, che poi seguirà al massimo un'ora di di contenuti, di, di interazione, quindi chiuderemo al più tardi alle ore 19. Oggi eccezionalmente, essendo il primo incontro del 2023, a fine incontro faremo un piccolo brindisi per farci gli auguri di buon anno e anche per, per ringraziare il nostro ospite che è venuto da Venezia apposta per, per noi. E quindi io sono Juan Carlos De Martin, sono co-direttore del, del Centro Nexa, sono professore di ingegneria informatica qui al Politecnico e ho fondato il Centro Nexa insieme a Marco Rico. Passiamo Antonio. Grazie, io sono Antonio, Antonio Servetti, e sono ricercatore al Politecnico, sempre nel Dipartimento di Automatica e di Informatica. Io sono, aspetta, aspetta, Marco, passiamo ah, eh, io sono Marco Ricolfi, sono, ero professore di eh, proprietà intellettuale a diritto <ride> d'Italia. Sono Roberto Lalli, sono ricercatore da pochi mesi al Politecnico di Torino, sono uno storico della scienza della tecnica. Francesco Nicoli, anche io sono appena arrivato, direi che posso dire di primo giorno fisicamente a Torino, ricercatore eh, in, in un policy eh, al Politecnico. Ok, entrambi membri del nato da poco centro Teseus su tecnologia, società e umanità del Politecnico. Mm -hmm. Benvenuti. Io sono Maurizio Borghi, sono professore di, di proprietà intellettuale, diritto commerciale, ma in realtà mi occupo di proprietà intellettuale eh, al Dipartimento di Giurisprudenza dell'Università di Torino e con direttore del Centro Nexa. Antonio Vetro, come l'altro Antonio, ricercatore in questo Dipartimento, il Dipartimento Automatico e Informatica del Politecnico di Torino. Buonasera a tutti, io sono Ludovica Paseri, sono assistente di ricerca eh, in Unito in filosofia del diritto e informatica giuridica, lavoro con i professori Durante Pagalli. Buonasera a tutti, Enrico Marta, professore associato per il Politecnico in nella stessa di Partimento Automatico e Informatica. Buonasera a tutti, sono Anita Botta e mi occupo della comunicazione del Centro Nexa. Io sono Giovanni Garipo, eh, ingegnere informatico e team manager del Centro Nexa. Io sono Marco Rondina, sono dottorando del, del Centro Nexa qui al Dipartimento di Ingegneria Informatica. Buonasera, io sono Beatrice Balzo, sono stata tirocinante del Centro Nexa e adesso ho una borsa al Dipartimento di Giurisprudenza. Massimo Durante, professore di filosofia del diritto, informatica giuridica del Dipartimento di Giurisprudenza. Benissimo, benvenuti a tutti. E passo a introdurre il nostro, il nostro ospite. Nicola Julien, che è professore a IMT Atlantic e gli ho chiesto di dire due parole sulla sua, eh, sul suo Ateneo, è una delle principali università francesi di tecnologia, e visiting professor all'Università di Venezia Ca Foscari eh, per l'anno accademico eh, 2022-2023 al Dipartimento di Management, e anche il, il direttore scientifico di Marsuen, Mars mm -hmm. eh, il, 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 la rete di ricerca Breton e la società digitale. La sua ricerca riguarda i paradigmi di open innovation dal punto di vista di un'economia dell'innovazione, studia l'interazione tra istituzioni e la produzione non di mercato collettiva, eh, organizzazioni di open innovation come Microsoft e Wikipedia e come la teoria economica può spiegare l'emergenza di questi fenomeni, di come, che impatto hanno sull'industria e come la partecipazione di queste istituzioni alla produzione collettiva impatta eh, i loro obiettivi, la loro organizzazione e più in generale come questi progetti sociotecnici eh, lavorano. Il titolo della sua lezione è Digital Commons Governance and AI Algorithmic Management. 
So, well, thank you very much. To you. Um, sí, no, no solo ha bastante bravo para hacer la presentación en, en italiano, pero da cuatro meses es un poco difícil para mí de pensar uh, en italiano y de hablar. So, I'm going to switch to to English, but of course, if you want to to ask your questions in Italian, you can try to understand. I will, um, on in Italian or in English, probably in English. You see that my, this the title is a bit different uh, from uh, the presentation. There's a title I put on the a global presentation, but because I, I wanted to stress that uh, what uh, I'm interested in is uh, this idea of um, platform or social technical on things which help people doing things together. And what does that mean to be digital, to do things together on a digital environment? And more especially, you see that I'm going to speak about knowledge production. So we we'll come back to intellectual property and we we'll talk about intellectual property. But it's more the idea of how do people, or as I have a background in economics, agents, companies, um, but in the end, it's, it's people um, collectively uh, organize, come together, uh, organize themselves to produce things, being software or you see that I'm going to speak about Wikipedia. Um, so um, I come from uh, something which is a bit different from Polytechnical because it's very small. It's a university of circa 2,000 students. And we are big from the French point of view, um, which is School of Engineering. So, but the French School of Engineering. So, we are um, taking students from level um, Laurea, um, and uh, we they finish with a master in engineering, but in France it's something quite uh, valuable. So, um, and of course they have uh, courses in telecommunications. Um, computer science, etc., but also in management, economics, and I am from the economics or data science uh, <coughs> department, but it's, it's mixed. Um, and what do I say is that so to present my university. So we have a student. If you want to, to send your student to our university for some period, it would be a pleasure to, to welcome them, of course, and uh, vice versa. And so um, I think uh, and uh, I'm a scientific director of Mars One, which regroups all the research on Brittany. So, circa 3 million people, so four universities, three mm -hmm. schools, like uh, my university, so seven universities in total. Um, the research on social and humanitarian science who are interested in the question uh, around uh, digitization of society. So, very interesting connection with Nexa because it's this idea of having a point of view more um, social and uh, well, humanity science oriented towards a question of uh, informatics. From my point of view, it's very interesting to, to, to be able to discuss with um, computer science because when you are in computer science, you have to learn from well, law when you are doing uh, computer things and today, open source things, for instance. And it's important, and as a well, scientist in economics or in sociology, my colleague Karin Woodard is more about uh, is from sociology, to understand the techniques behind uh, what we are studying to, to see what's possible, not, not to see too many uh, stupidity about uh, artificial intelligence, for instance, or computer science in general. Uh, this, ah, no, this. Schema, but uh, okay, this one, I think. Yes, I this think. one. Okay. So, um, my presentation will be more or less there are four points, but two main things. It's about speaking of digital commons and trying to present my point of view of what a digital common is. Digital commons uh, is. Um, so it would be more an economics point of view than a theoretical or low science point of view. And I will discuss why I have this point of view. But I think what helps that would 
generate some discussion later on. But of course, if you want to ask questions during my presentation, feel free to do so. And then the last uh, bullet point would be about an example of what we have analyzed uh, with this fra framework in background about uh, algorithm management within a, a commons, which is uh, Wikipedia. And how uh, analyzing how uh, algorithm management is done within Wikipedia helps or illustrates uh, what I have said about uh, digital commons organization and uh, circulation. Um, so uh, the first part is about well the definition and uh, what and it's it's quite challenging because uh, digital commons are more or less well twenty years and uh, started uh, because uh, in fact appears on the internet something which was not very really forecast or it has been said that internet was something freeing people etc but um, what appeared uh, in the internet is uh, a lot of open source projects software started in the 80s but blooming in the 90s uh, and then um, uh, today and other uh, big enormous collective project which was not been, had not been seen before in terms of number of people involved. Wikipedia, for instance, uh, are it's more than it's thousands of people involved, involved in each language, uh, the, well, writing articles and uh, structuring a thing in Wikipedia, which is today uh, quite enormous. In French, I think we have two million articles a bit less in Italian, but uh, in English it's around circa six million articles. Um, the um, Encyclopedia Britannica was around 100,000. So it's 60 times bigger in terms of number of articles. Of course, all the articles are not as same level of quality, but um, most of them, more than 100,000, are at this level. So, well, Lots of questions have been raised about why. Why do people do that? More interesting from an economist's point of view, okay, people, but also companies pay people to provide intellectual development, software, article to everybody. That's a bit weird from an economist's point of view. And from a management point of view, well, organizing 10 people it's not easy, but it's doable. 1,000, it's impossible. You have to structure things. And it seems that everybody can enter, everybody can come in, leave, and do what they want, and they kind of try, well, succeed to make um, a living or make a project which works. Um, of course, they have had a lot, a huge impact on the economy and uh, some economies, software industry have been changed a lot. Uh, the, there is no uh, encyclopedia anymore, no private encyclopedia published. And uh, which we are in EXA, what are the social benefits? Uh, is it good in a way to have just Wikipedia as an encyclopedia today? Is it um, better than before? Um, can we do better? And if Wikipedia is so important, how as a society we deal with this kind of thing, which is a private uh, project uh, done by people who do what they want once again, and, and um, etc. And, and um, all these has been coined uh, well, more recently, but um, turning in 2006 <coughs> with uh, Ostrom and S uh, book uh, around digital commons. So this idea of having things in common which are digital. Well, in fact, um, it's a bit challenging to understand what a digital common can be. Um, because if you look at uh, what, uh, what Ostrom is, uh, um, comes from um, political economics and institutional economics. He was very interested by how it is organized how the rules structure what people can do, and uh, at a political uh, point of view, how this organization can impact the society. But well, that was a main <coughs> focus. And she was interested by 
these string things, which has which she called common pool resources, hence commons, uh, which are a bit strange uh, from an economic point of view because they are both reversible and non-excludable. So the idea is that if you take it, well, you take them from somebody else. So like a fish, if you, if you fish a fish, but nobody can fish it anymore. But non-excludable, it's very hard to um, forbid somebody to go to a place and to fish in the same pond as you. Wow. So that she looked at that, there are several like, um, examples, like a forest, uh, the timbers, etc. And she, she has seen that, she, that and explains that in some condition, a group of people can organize themselves to manage this problem of rivality, so harvest the fish, but not too much, so as a resource is removable, for example, and to organize who is allowed to fish and who is not allowed. But she has looked at a lot of physical places and physical resources. And um, well, she has shown that to do so, they have to fix some rules to, to control, of course, uh, what is done, uh, but to exclude us. You are allowed, you are not allowed, to, to build bundles in, in, a, in a sense. And here comes uh, our problem. So we have institutional uh, arrangements which are low sometimes for the commons, classic commons, but also customs and uses. She is from institutional economics, so she takes law, but she puts the laws in terms of institutional arrangement amongst other arrangements like the customs, what you are, what you are, or something which is very important for us, technical tools which help you or provide you means to control or to facilitate the control of what's happening. Not speaking of video cameras, but uh, today satellites monitoring help uh, monitor the fishing uh, spaces uh, on Earth, for instance. So that's our technical means which change or may change the way that you may monitor a camera. And once again, a key point is that uh, you are building or you have some power to build control on what somebody is allowed to do or not allowed to do. And it is very structured, but it is collectively managed. So what the key point for her is that it is an organization managed by a collective which benefits from this management. So the, the users of these commons are the manager of the commons. And that is why they are interested in a good management that it's easier to, to organize themselves. So she did so on small groups, and uh, hence uh, comes, a, comes a problem with um, digital commons. Because if you are speaking of knowledge of digitalization, one key point of knowledge and digitalization is the free diffusion. So it's very hard to see where the rivalry is. Uh, it's very, um, everybody has access to the resource or to the knowledge projects. That's the, one of key goal of a free open source software or Wikipedia, that it is available to everybody. So there is no rivalry. Um, and there is no, okay, there is no exclusivity, but, but if there is no rivalry, it's not really a, a commons or a common pool resource at allows from, it is a perfectly good. From an economics point of view. So we know, we, we <clears throat> understand the big goods. We know that they are difficult to produce in an economic theory because you have a problem of incentive to produce. To, and in classic economic theory, there are two possibilities. Either you produce a good or you make the state produce a good, so you have taxes, and you collectively, or what well, it's a uh, not always collective, but uh, you decide, the state decides to produce each of the goods, research, for instance, education, but it's funded by the taxes, or you private, you make the good private, so you build some exclusivity, for instance, thanks to the property, 
and it allows a private actor to have the incentive to produce the good and then to sell access authorization to do this. This is the basis of, for instance, what happens in the software industry in the 1980s, beginning of 1980s. They have built these copyright things to incentive or what? So not more complicated, but to incentive the production or to allow the production of a software by the public and by the private industries. So it's possible, but in it's not a, a digital well, a common pool resource. It's not a classic commons. Is it a commons? Uh, why why do we have uh, to speak about commons or digital commons? Or is it interesting or a good tool as a theoretical tool to speak about digital commons? Uh, does it help? Does it provide some insight of how it works? Um, yes, say more or less two visions. So first of all, uh, Ostrom's one, um, which are, I'm going to develop the two visions, but they have this idea that um, we have this blooming of polycentric governance, uh, governed projects um, and the production of collective goods, so goods which make things available to everybody by group of people uh, which organize themselves at a level, in terms of size, which is really new. That's a, the first point. The second point, which also explain for about the use of this digital commons, that there were critics about state and market, about their capacity to manage and to produce this kind of goods. Critics about the product, how software was produced, for instance, in the 90s, it, well, still today, but it started in the 90s, the efficiency of the market to address the needs and the demand of, 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 the, of the users. So, somehow, it was this idea that Commons may propose something new. Um, and, well, similarity in terms of governance mechanism with classic Commons. So, well, I'll come back to that, but there is hierarchies, uh, there are uh, tools to govern the rights of people, there are people who are allowed to, to, to control what the voter can do, etc. So, well, it smells like comments, but it's very hard to, to understand what, uh, well, if the, the name is just a metaphor, or, fin or finally, if it's like a paragon of what a comment could, can, can be, but with, in a digital way. More precisely, we have two points of view uh, um, speaking uh, about comments. The first one, first one is uh, Ostrom herself, so the, the creator of the comments, or the person who studied uh, them, the physical comments. Once again, which is interested by politic, polycentric governance, and which uh, says that as long as there is a collective problem, uh, how is she going to well, I can remember that. Um, a social dilemma managed by a collective, it's a common. So she was interested by this idea of people organizing themselves once again to create rules, governance, which makes that things are done. And she said, well, look, yeah, if we have a collective dilemma, we have to produce knowledge, we have to produce good knowledge to maintain the knowledge. It's not easy. We can have bad knowledge produced which decrease the value, the global value. Of what is produced. People organize themselves to control that, so it's common. The problem is that there is an article in um, MI, um, MISQ, so quite good uh, journal, say, okay, so everything is common. As long as we have collective, as long as people are doing things together, and they, they, they speak about Airbnb as a common, Wikipedia, Facebook, GitHub, etc. So is it the same thing? Is Facebook the same thing as Wikipedia? In terms of collective organization of collective power, in terms of collective will, and in terms of uh, knowledge production. I'm not speaking about what they are doing, but in terms of who says what is to be done. Is Twitter today the same thing as Wikipedia? Just looking at the 
time clock should I turn it? No. Oh, very nice, thank you. Um, so, um, well, Ostrom, well, she died, but uh, she has started this, uh, this idea, but she, she started this idea saying, yeah, it's about the collective commands. And there are, this has raised a lot of critics about, yes, but um, for everything. And why do people participate? Uh, why do you do uh, knowledge production? That's a question. What do they gain in terms of when do they, they harvest or they uh, fish or they take the timber? Well, the, the valuation is easy to see. When you produce knowledge, you, you make an effort. And what is the, the what? What do you get? So, so it's a question of what and by whom. Who are these people who do that? On the other side, something which is closer to um, law studies, uh, more intellectual property right oriented, coming from the states, uh, the next one. It's a United States discussion at the beginning, anyway, because that's one is also from the United States. Um, defining the commons of the resources available to people, and this idea that uh, nobody can control who is able to access to these resources. Or um, who is able to, uh, so it's really about rights, control of rights. Uh, so somehow they are taking the, um, the copyright um, in the reverse and with, hence the idea of copy left. Commons have the idea of, well, we organize things so that everybody can access and we don't control. We don't want to control. So that's what is new about that. And of course, this is a public good for the economists. And of course, and this there has been an evolution about the discussion about that, saying yes, commons are public goods managed by a group. The question is why not saying that public goods managed by a group? Why using this commons uh, term? Is it really a third way of producing these public goods? And that's uh, how this group of thinking focused on is this idea that it's another way of producing public goods. Behind, uh, uh, behind the, the market, the state, this idea of common based peer productions. Uh, so it's really about how the people organize, um, how uh, they try to cooperate to produce this public good. So we are not that far from Austria in the end because it's about organization, structuration, um, and with a better definition of what a common, a common digital commons is. Has to be produced by collective. It has to uh, give access to everybody, etc., etc. But yeah, it stress the fact that IPR uh, is, is a strange way of using IPR because it's you renounce to, to the monopoly provided by an uh, intellectual property right. Um, but you, they didn't explain, or they have not yet explained why, why, and exactly what do you pro produce? Okay, that's okay. But why do people do that? And who are these people? Um, so, somehow they are discussing about uh, well, the idea that we have classic commons, uh, open commons, which are more decentralized, which more free uh, entry exist system, which is quite new. Before the classic commons, you have very structured entry uh, and uh, exit. Um, <clears throat> but it does not exhaust the question of why speaking about commons, is it very interesting, and uh, really how we can have a more and a more better, I hope, understanding of um, is, it is it really, are there really commons or are there something else, or public goods produced in, a, in new ways, and in fact we speak of commons because we speak of this idea of producing goods which are for the community are used by collective use of common uh, goods in terms of more of public law, uh, like air or collective goods. Uh, so we have tried with, with Karen to, to, to discuss this question is really what is behind this idea of digital commons? What is behind what people do? Um, can we have the same, uh, uh, let's say, um, start, um, than, um, as Ostrom saying, well, um, well, she said that to, to um, 
when you study a common, you have to, to study the if excluding excluding is easy or not. Uh, if we have a collective action program, on what? And um, what is the good which are really produced and allocated? What are the rules of the rules about? Why what uh, are the people organizing finally? They are cooperating on what? They are managing what? Um, is it really, uh, is it, well, a shared resource? Probably not knowledge, we agree on that. It's not, knowledge, the knowledge produce is not a, sh uh, a rare resource because it's available. But is it anyhow something which is rare, which has to, has to be ma uh, managed, and which explains as well why, why people want to participate, to access to this rare resource. The idea of comments is that you access to a rare resource, and doing so, you are willing to maintain this resource or the global resource uh, you are fishing. Um, so we start to, to allocate. With that in mind as well, is that uh, this is our strength, so 100%. Is that when you have a organ common organization, uh, this is missing users here on the, on the right hand side. Users are those <coughs> who have access just to the good. The fact that the good exists. Okay? So there are, well, everybody has access to the fact that they are fishing the ocean. It could be an important thing, societal things, but when you are managing a commons, uh, just few people, the consumer in Austrian terms, have access to, uh, to actions which impact the good. So you have the right to fish. Okay? You have the right to access to some term timbers. Um, and some people, as a manager, have, uh, can do action, ma uh, management actions or manage the actions of the other. Say, yes, you have access, you have the right to fish or one ton of fish per year, um, etc. And to exclude, because in the end, you, have to, you need some tools to, to control or to, to help people to respect the rules, let's say. And some owners, which own, uh, we may own the, the, the annihilation capacity in terms of uh, juridic law, but also physical laws that you can uh, really exclude everybody to the, for, from, the, from the, the access to the code. Um, so as the clock is running, I, I, I will not go further, but you, I think the, the slides will be diffused anyway on the presentation if it's available online. So, um, so what is said um, by Ostrom is that the producer uh, uh, look for a direct reward to their, from their participation or the contribution in classic commons. And what has been studied in this knowledge commons like WPTR, um, open source software, etc., is that it's exactly the same thing for the producer, for the people who contribute to uh, Wikipedia or to open source software is that they, when doing so, um, they do so because they want to do so. The, 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 the mere contribution um, ex, is, 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 uh, is valuable for them. Think uh, of, we are researchers, or uh, when you send an article to a journal. Well, you, not in law every time, but when you, we send an article to a journal, we do, you do not expect a payment. What you want is that this article is accepted by the journal. You may not even be very interested by the fact that it is published by the journal. What you want is to be able to say, yeah, I have published in, uh, I don't know, I would be happy to have, to have written the economic journal, for instance. And I'll put that on my resume, and if you want the article, it's available. I can make the diffusion myself. But behind that, so the fact that uh, we researchers are looking for that, there are other rewards, which are, first of all, the intellectual challenge. We have done this job because we were interested by the challenge of doing things which have not been done before, try to go beyond what is done. It's somehow the same thing when you interview people, this is data of several research, but interview people about software problems, software production, open source, well, they try the bug, they want to, to challenge the, the things and to find the solution. Or they need 
uh, something, they want to develop something, and it's easier for them to publish them than to, to contribute to the project or to the software because it orients the position toward the needs or toward their knowledge. And also contributing to a project which works is be, being sure that your production, your vision of knowledge, your need, uh, if we speak as a software, will be taken into account in the future um, uh, versions of software. So once it's within the code, it's in the code. And it's, so it's not merely about um, accessing the knowledge, it's about turning the knowledge toward what you want, your vision of the knowledge. And it's also where we discovered that you have feedback from uh, your peers uh, about what you think or helps from your peers. And a second, um, level uh, benefits which, uh, which are not discovered by the people when, when they have some um, contribution, some time within a project, is that you have a social status which happens. But sometimes uh, it's beneficial on the job market, for instance, but not, it's not something that you plan at the beginning, but it's something which happens. And also being recognized, being a Wikipedia or being a, an open source software developer is something which is important for some people. So once you are in, involved in this kind of uh, visions, well, it, it gives you a status and it's hard to stop because you have to maintain this. This is quite coherent with uh, some the um, psychological, social, 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 social theories uh, like um, by the CMRM about the, the need for, for the human, human being to <coughs> of autonomy, competency, or relationship to others. And so if you look back to what I've said, it's more or less these categories which are stress. So it's not that surprising that some people develop articles. It has always existed. Um, science has started by amateurs who were doing um, investigations. They were rich, so they have they had time. Today, more people, uh, let's say, have time to, to do so. Um, and in fact, yes, we have a rare resource. Strangely, this idea of contribution is the rare resource. Once again, if you look at the access to a um, scientific journal, you know that it's a rare resource. And it's a fight uh, to access to these journals. But some, it's the same uh, for um, software or for uh, Wikipedia that um, accessing to the, this knowledge of flux management is difficult uh, because, um, in fact, you, have, uh, you are constrained by the knowledge stock. Um, I'm pretty sure that the article on Torino is quite, well, quite long, well written, and it's hard to add to this. So if you want to add things to Torino, and then you have to create a new article but is it, is it, will it be accepted by the manager? Or to argue a lot to say that it's important to add <coughs> that or to not as precise, etc. So it's harder, more challenging, of course. Um, and um, in fact, when you are looking at uh, these uh, things, you have to be controlled or you are trying to access as well to expert feedback. And this time is limited as well. So, Somehow, and if you look at um, the organization of these projects, um, what they regulate, what the hierarchization is about, um, it's about managing <coughs> the contribution and allowing people to contribute or not. Um, surveying that when they contribute, they contribute by the rule. They do what the project is expecting them to do. So, Strangely, the, first, the question I ask in the beginning, of, which is strange, that well, it's strange that people contribute to knowledge, and why do they do that? And we should incentivize them to do so. Well, the, the answer to the project is that well, no, we don't really need to incentivize them. We have to control how they do so, and not to incentivize them to do so as we want, than really asking them to contribute. But at the end, we see that. Not 100% true, but somehow for a project, what is important, what has to be managed, 
is the evolution of knowledge, the flux of knowledge, more than the, the stock. And if we think of knowledge flux and knowledge stock, we come back to something which is closer to what we have in classic commons. This idea that we have the public good, the forest, the fishery, and this idea of contribution to the evolution of this public good, which is what is managed. But in the, here it's a production, adding to the knowledge more than harvesting a part of the public good. So it's a bit different, but not that much. And we come back to, as I said, the two big categories which are very important to uh, classic comment, the consumer. And the consumer, although they are allowed to consume to access to the knowledge box, the consumer will be us contributing to uh, the um, scientific article, uh, scientific journals, or us making an article to uh, Wikipedia or software and being able to access to the uh, benefits of having a contribution to a project, to Linux or to, or to a scientific open source software, to having the citation, having the feedback from the, from the, the other <coughs> contributors, and the users, the basic users, which are those who have access to the knowledge stock. So you access to Wikipedia as it is today, you can read it, but that's it. And every time that somebody says, oh, Wikipedia is not good, or Wikipedia is not as I want it, or Wikipedia does not provide information about that, the answer of the Wikimedia Foundation, but also to the Wikipedia, which are the consumers, would be, well, consume. If you don't want, if you want to do more than using, you have to do it, do more, you have to consume. But not everybody is interested by consuming, by the willing to, to pay some bank to print. And that's, that's a bit of the fight between the users and the consumer. And we'll come back to that between the society and this project about, yes, but in fact, what's important for the project, what the project manages are the consumer, the consumptions, and organizing in this consumption for them and from their, mind, their, their mindset of what they want to see done. And this, again, help to come back to a classic vision of the, 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 the commons with the same kind of organization about the roles, I don't forget the user here, with the contributors, which have action on the knowledge, so the evolution of uh, the, the, the commons, or the, the the public good, and we have people who manage this contribution. So we will have rights, etc., etc. So it's not really a, a see the clock to, um, ticking. So um, once again, um, yes, digital commons exist, and yet we find the same main categories of definition uh, as um, Ostrom did. That it's a collective management of a rare resource which is accessible to just a small part of the, all the users, of a selected group. Uh, it, the rare resource is this access to contribution. So it's really strange from a classic economics or a digital point of view to say that finally, you are trying to controlling which uh, should have been incentives before, the fact that people want to, con to, to, to contribute not everybody wants to get, but enough people to make that kind of project working and that kind of project uh, being hard to the contributor. It's very hard. Uh, it's a very tough uh, world, Wikipedia, but of course, open source software as well. And all the social technical systems, so, well, the organization, the rules they publish, the tools they use, and if I have time, I'll speak about that later, are about controlling this, the organizing this knowledge field, controlling it, um, making it easier for people to access to this part, but also harder for them to do um, bad things or, or not things which are in the vision of the project. And it allows a bigger group to benefit from this. Uh, existence of resources and the access of knowledge. Of course, 
there are indirect uh, advantages for the contributor uh, of the fact that there is a huge audience. It's fun to say that, well, my article has been seen 10,000 times, 100,000 times. But it's just figures. I mean, you don't really care about the user. You don't mind. You are not going to adapt your article because a user asks you uh, something else. So you just say, well, you take it as it is. You are happy to take it. You, you are not happy. Do it. Contribute. So, somehow, our point is that yes, we can speak about digital comments. They are not that different from comments. You have the same structure, the same organization, so it's a specific technical organization. So, yes, it makes sense to, to distinguish these kind of things um, and speaking of comments. But of course, uh, it's not the same, exactly the same as physical comments. So, there are differences. Um, First of all, uh, what, digital, uh, what is specific about digitalization of comments is the size, of course. Uh, what um, digital facilitates or allows is this idea of incremental building and modularity. That it's easier, not always doable, but it's easier to build modular software than a modular forest. I don't know if you can imagine some zoning or some <coughs> things like that. It's easier to start with one article and then two and three than building a bridge. This is classic, so some Marwell and Oliver uh, things about collective action. So we come back to basis, the basis of a collective action. So we start with an article, then a second, then a third. And then you may attract people saying, oh, it's interesting, and the platform is interesting. So let's do a fourth. And this finishes by making something. Um, digitalization has made uh, of the internet easier as well to recruit people. If you have five people interested by um, stones in the world, well, before the internet, it was hard, hard for them to cooperate. They have done that. Well, letters, scientific letters um, for science has been exchanged in Europe, but it speeds up the process and it helps to reach another level. And of course, the platform. This is as important that information system management facilitates the gathering of people, the allocation of rights, and also the allocation of modular things uh, within this complex model. So it's really, and I concur with Ostrom, a mix of uh, rules, uh, intellectual property, and technical organization, which makes the facilitates the creation of these digital commons and the scaling of these digital commons. This makes um, it changed a bit the filters because in classic uh, <coughs> comments you have a priori uh, filtering. You say yes, you are going to be you, you, you. Uh, you can uh, tame that. So you can fish, you can timber, and the people go. Here it's an a posteriori um, management. So start contributing, and I'll tell you if you have contributed well and if your contribution is accepted. It's very clear on open source software that you have to commit and your commit has been uh, accepted. It's less clear in Wikipedia from a newcomer because you try to change, and strangely, your change is not accepted, or is, it, is, it, it is, is erased within seconds, or it, it is accepted. You don't really, really know why, but is that work, or is that work, it does not work. But in the end, you still, you always have a control of your done, and the effort has to be made up, uh, up, um, before um, the acceptance. So you, you become contributor, you start by trying to become a contributor before, we, be, before, be, before being a contributor or consumer, as I said. Okay. Before it was that you were accepted as consumer and then you could pursue. Um, it helped as well defining what a comment is and what a comment is not. For instance, it's not just about licensing. It's not because uh, a produce, a production of software is licensed under an open source license, like GPL or MIT. 
in my point of view, that it is a commons because it has to be collectively managed. It's a collective project. So it's just a project published by an agent which allows everybody to what allows everybody to use it, but it's not a commons. Um, it's not about it, uh, only collective management systems, otherwise there are club goods, for instance. Sportive equipment are collectively managed, but they are not really commons. Because you have this idea of producing something or letting something access to everybody. Uh, digital club goods exist. I don't know if you use Moodle here, but uh, Moodle is collective or um, class, which is you have to accept the people and it's, a, it's, a, it's closed by members. Um, so, once again, for a commons, I should have said a uh, digital commons to exist, it must be, you must have a rare resource accessible to a small selected group, collectively managed. So Twitter is not a comment, the commons um, could be, but uh, um, of course it's not. By a social technical systems, which take care of the project's evolution, so which manage the knowledge flux. So an archive, even if an archive is available online, uh, maintained by a group of people, it doesn't evolve. So I don't see where the rare resource is. And uh, it has to allow a bigger group to benefit from the existence of the resource. So this idea of knowledge stock, which is um, provided and defended by the license. Um, so the consequences is um, that the cost of regulation is mostly shifted from the regulator to the regulees, to so the newcomers. Once again, they have to do the effort, try to, co to contribute, to consume, and they are being told if they have consumed, they are accepted as consumer or not. But in the same time, they can do that several times. So it's harder, but you can try, you can learn. So it's more open as well. Um, the position are gained by reputation. So it's less about your, let's say, social or cultural capital. It's not because you are researchers that you are accepted or specialist uh, as a contributor to Wikipedia. You have to prove that what you contribute is good from the project point of view. And this argument of um, of power, of, of competencies, are less important, or less than classic epistemic communities. Um, and again, the regulation of access is managed by a mix, is at the heart of the government process. So it's interesting for everybody from a software a science point of view, for a law point of view, for an economic or management point of view, but it's a mix. So we need everybody to, to understand how it works how people use uh, their power or their, 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 what they control to gain uh, access to consume more or to be able to, 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 to manage more the project, to orientate the project to a more um, their vision of, of the project. And it's more, it's less fixed than classic commons. It's always, the, the boundaries exist, but they are always moving because if you stop contributing, stop contributing when you are not a consumer anymore, and you are going to lose your position in terms of um, capacity of influencing the rules, etc. So you are more, um, you need to more to be more active and regularly active. Um, and we have this idea of users, so I've talked about collectives, so contributors. And the more popular the project is, the more competitive the access becomes. So things again some of the more uh, important journals. And when a project becomes um, visible, while well, the barriers to entry to consumption to, co to contribution increases. It was very easy to contribute to Wikipedia in the 20s, uh, in the, the 2000, 2005, 6. It's very hard to and the community, what is called the community, that's why I have my title was Commons Community. The idea of community from a sociological point of view is the idea of people who know that they belong and we recognize the other as belonging to the same group. And in fact, if you look at that, 
with these infrastructures, the community are the policy makers, the people who manage, who have the right to, to define the rules. So people in Wikipedia will say, yes, we can do that like that, or we accept, we don't accept the contributions. Um, so there is this idea of community. So uh, you ask a Wikipedian or a contributor to a uh, open source software, who is a contributor, who is an important uh, person for the project, or who manages this project, they know, they can tell you. And you know that you are part of that. But it's always a vision or a cognition, like peer recognition, that's the idea of community. And the paradox is that this idea of community, of collective being together, in fact, the community within this uh, project or these uh, groups is the hierarchy. I mean, people speaking of community are people, the policy maker, are people who are controlling the newcomers, the main or basic contributors, and the access uh, or the, what is produced to the users. Um, so, so there is still regulation. It's more, uh, of, uh, there are more discussions, mutual adjustment uh, within this community uh, and more of automation between the community and the consumer. So the, the boundaries between the community and the, the consumer is are higher than in classic communities. But in the same time, always open. Um, and um, once you are within the community, you have access to new things, to new people, to, to new uh, benefits. But that makes you <laughs> makes harder for you to leave, but involve you more and make you closer to maybe a, a role of um, classic um, involvement in a, in a, for instance, an association. You, you, you take responsibility, you have things to do, you can live like that, etc. <coughs> So, finally, uh, the question raised by, by this kind of comments is that, um, well, there are several questions. The first one is the one which, which you, a lot of this talk about, it. who can defend the common good? What can defend the, the knowledge of English stock? Um, the public good can be defended, but it's very hard to know by whom. So it's a license violation. So you need, most of the time, an actor which can be funded. And most of the time, this project have an institution which manage more or less a project, which represents the project, and which acts as a representation of the project. But there are a lot of discussions as well are in law about, well, is there uh, this idea of commons good where a person could defend the project in the name of the project without being the institution? How can we do that? But there are a lot of things that no, no, no. Um, but mm, more interestingly, well, from my point of view, because I'm not from log studies, is should we defend the commons? Is a system of projections that is very important to defend? Uh, it's always um, a private project made by some people who have this <laughs> idea of the policy makers, who have this idea of what Wikipedia, for instance, some idea of software, they have some idea of open source software. And yes, it is useful, but um, somehow, um, how do, you, do we force them to take into account the consumers, the basic consumer, or the users, the society needs? They don't have to. Um, and as banks, they can become too big to fail somehow. Today, well, it's very hard to create a competitor to Wikipedia. If you don't agree with Wikipedia or think Wikipedia can do that better, Yes, but to attract people, to create things, you have to create uh, a counterpower. <clears throat> they have done that, for instance, for the inclusion of women into Wikipedia. So to critique this Wikipedia as an institution from other institutions to force uh, Wikipedia to react and the contributor to try to open up a bit because well, they were criticized in their vision of what they are doing and the capacity of providing good uh, knowledge or interesting knowledge, etc. And for that, modality helps because you can always create new articles, or new add-ons. It's harder for software, but to include more <coughs> the, the things. And um, what 
Well, in the end, um, what is the responsibility for these projects? Maybe the institution which represents them about their work uh, within society. Can are they liable of what the information they provide? If they are the monopoly of knowledge or the software everybody uses, do we ask, well, can we ask them, as we ask uh, for Twitter or for other uh, platforms, to accept some things or to, be, to oblige them to do things? They will answer, but if you want to do it, do it. Contribute. As long as you do it by your by the rules, it's open, do it. Um, so woman needs a project, and once again, woman, it's not very important. As long as it's a small project by friends uh, in their garden, nobody cares. But if it turns into uh, an institution, social uh, impacting thing, once again, we don't know if it's better than a company or the state. It's come back to this idea of new way of production. And this, of course, I don't have an answer to that, but uh, it can be asked. So uh, I, I'm not going to, 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 to study that, but in a nutshell, what we have done is analyzing Wikipedia algorithmic management to look at how it works. So we have looked at well, software which uh, automatically detect contribution and automatically erase or accept contribution. Why have we done that? So because it's at the core of the commons, this idea of contribution management. And we have tried to see how this idea of automation of this control changes or not the way Wikipedia is there. And um, well, I can exp I don't know. Do I take 10, 10 minutes to go through that? Or? Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, so, um, well, the, the idea was that uh, there are a lot of discussion about algorithmic management, uh, artificial intelligence, things that you have over standardization effect, and first is the owner's power and control over uh, the, the, the controllers, and a lot of problem to uh, increase the problem to listen to users' needs or difficulties, because it's automatic, you don't talk to, uh, to a software, not yet to a computer. Thing. No, that's not what I wanted to do, etc. etc. Um, and that, a lot of call for better control of their use uh, at work by the platforms in terms of um, um, how they work, how the algorithm works, etc. Um, in fact, um, also there is a problem, more important problem with this uh, algorithm management that it pushes us to our, our was default that complacency well it works let it work as long as it doesn't so you will we not accept easily or less easily that there is a problem and a bias saying that um, well from the start they are right um, they, they work they are right and also that uh, specific things which is should be what well, I would like to study in the future that um, in fact the tool managers may not be the managers or the participant manager in terms of it's all as already as you see in software production that you design a software so you implement rules which control people or the way people do things but people who are creating this rule and computing this rule are not the people who are in fact creating the rules or trying to use the rules to make, and that's a problem, because it means that the tools manager may not understand the, the business, classic in computer science and computer development, and may implement rules, which are not what the manager can would like to implement, or may not allow the manager to make the rules evolve. So, well, what not, what best than open source software or open platform open or comments to study all this because the users are the managers. The rules of the, the, the tools developed algorithms are developed by the users. Once again, when I say users here, I, I think contributors. Um, and um, the question was, do we, have, do we have less bias, less errors? Is it more flexible or quicker, a quicker match between the uses? And um, 
Um, also, it, it was easier because the information is available. If you ask uh, Facebook how it works, it's harder than looking at Wikipedia. You have the discussion. Um, so we look at the management of contributions, and it's done by a lot of tools. I don't know if you know, but in the French Wikipedia, it was in 2015, we had 71 active bots in the French Wikipedia. So Thomas, may I just yeah. ask a question? The word users here is the same. Uh... You're right. The word users here okay. is contributors. Yeah. So, it's so this is what you would call consumers. Before. Exactly. You're yeah. right. Totally Thank you. Right. Thank no, you. No, no, that's no. enough. So that's uh, the problem I'm seeing here. Um, so, how do we control the contributors, the, 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 the consumers of, um, of Wikipedia by the votes? By, and we have a lot. We have a lot in Italian, in Wikipedia, in English, etc. They are not the same. They are more or less designed by the policy makers, the community. So that was it's quite interesting. Uh, so, well, I pass through the techniques. We look at the uh, discussions of uh, one bot, so we, which is called Salbot, which means uh, something like Naughty Bot in French, a developer. Uh, and which eliminates contributions automatically, which are measures as vandalism. So it reverts that. You don't, and if you, have you ever tried to, to vandalize Wikipedia? No, you should. Well, don't log in, but you just do, uh, you put some uh, bad words in an article, and you see that within seconds, it will be destroyed. Uh, so it doesn't harm. <clears throat> it's, it's a machine, it does. The machine time, so it's impacting, but it's not very um, And um, so we look at the discourse, the problems raised by the users, uh, the discussion of these policymakers about these bots, its action, is it doing um, uh, good things, bad things, uh, are there exactly exit programs, etc. The first result is that there are always errors within an artificial exercise or uh, an algorithm, you cannot design a perfect algorithm. It doesn't exist. Or it may exist at some point of time, but the problem, as we know that we are dealing with humans, human organizations, the need are evolving, people are inventing new things, and of course, even with an artificial intelligence, you are dealing with the past. You are making rules based on the past. Either you have learned that, or you have Program that it's not the problem. In the end, it's about the past. So when something new happens, you fall into traps and you fall into errors. Um, so the errors, for instance, um, they didn't take into account big um, um, web address, so they were erased. But oh, another example for me with uh, the learning in, uh, in Italian is that. If you look deeper, you use deeper to translate from French to Italian, you have this void for the product way to, to, to speak to people. Today, you don't use it very much. It's more like in Spanish. But deeper has learned from old, uh, old text. Um, and deeper use this a lot of void. That's typically something showing the evolution of the language, of the human creation which is hard to take into account by some uh, <coughs> poor uh, automated uh, instruments like that. And it happens also in Wikipedia. But the problem uh, is not that the problem is that um, making algorithm management make harder for the user to understand what happens. Uh, so it's very, you have been reverted, but you don't know, don't know why, you don't have people to talk to, um, uh, they don't know what they have done wrong, so the algorithmic management makes it harder to, um, to justify or to understand the goals and to teach the people what they have done wrong. And also, hence, to detect if it's a really a problem or an error, good faith error, or a vandalism. These categories are blurring with uh, this automatic control and this automatic get. And when you want to complain, to complain, you have to go to some places, which is called the bistro, the bar in French, uh, which are not easy to see. If you read, go to Wikipedia French, 
and you only read all the inscriptions to, to know how to contribute, they explain that to you. That you have your problem, you have to go there, you have to do this, and you can answer even to the <coughs> algorithms, there is somebody somebody behind, etc. But that raised the cost of contribution even more. And um, um, for a, a discrepancy, it's not going to be same signal, so you have to, the supervised must complain because if it's automated, you don't see even if it has been erased in the right spaces and must prove that the problem, uh, there is a problem. So it has to explain, justify, is not a boundary. So complacency appears as well here. First, even the creator trusts the bot more than you human, which is, oh, I, have made a, I think there is a mistake, etc., etc. And for a, a, a discrepancy uh, being tagged as an error, a problem, or an artificial error problem, you need ten your participants, the community I've talked about, to say, yes, there is an error. Somebody has said, no, that's not normal. There is a problem. I don't understand what the bot has done, but it's not fair, or it's not right, or it's not by the rule, etc. <laughs> So once again, it comes back to um, make the votes at the service of the policymakers and to increase um, the uh, differences between the, the basic consumers, the contributors, and the newcomers, and this community of policymakers, and increases the powers of community, but make them uh, somehow um, far off from the basic contributors. Um, and, and they have made some technical choices which increases that again, because what well, they bought uh, is seen by the users and by the tech, social technical organization as a human, not as a bot, for technical reasons for them. Because in fact, if it's a bot, they don't see that he has uh, taken care of problems. <coughs> So is there a list of problems to take care of? They have to go there, see that sailboat have done it, etc. If it's a human, it's, it's a said as taking care of. So it was easier for the policy maker. But once again, it makes that sailboat is seen more by a user as a human and not as a machine. So they don't know that it was automatic, that maybe it's a problem, technical problem, etc. etc. Sailboat is not welcoming. Um, so, um, and in the end, it's a social technical choice. Today, sailboat is less used for a less uh, efficient um, boat because one of the goals of the foundation and accepted, that has been to be accepted by the French community, is to uh, be more welcoming to newcomers because they needed new people, new insight, uh, new uh, people wanted to do something different from what is already there, like new uh, women uh, articles, we have articles about women. So they had to be more welcoming, to accept more errors from the beginners, and to be more, um, well, um, managing this error, explaining more, uh, allowing more errors for them to maintain these people. Because if you are reverted at the beginning, you, you, well, you quit. So they have somehow disconnected sailboat, which was very eff efficient, but not very effective as a tool to welcome the people and to reach the big goal of Wikipedia to be the more extended possible, the more... Um, uh, so conflicting um, goals within a project may make you change your, your, your ideas. But what I wanted to stress is that in the end, it's always the use, the, the owner, the policy maker, the owner of the platform of the project, being a private company like Facebook or uh, this community, which manage and decide the use of uh, this algorithm management. And we use this algorithm management to be more in power over the male consumers, the basic consumers and to control more the consumer in terms of what they can do, what is accepted within the project or not. And it works, it's the same, I mean, between private platform or a public 
like Wikipedia, if you are a new newcomer, you will not see the difference in terms of control of difficulties to, to be involved, to access to uh, the, the understanding of what you have to do, etc. Of course, um, the main difference, and again, it comes back to what the comment is and why it is different to private managed organization or project, is that you have you still have this feedback loop. So it's costly. Uh, the artificial intelligence makes them costlier, but it's always possible. You still have that. Um, you 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 have this open feedback loop. If I want to access, you, you, I can. If I want to access to feedback to Facebook feedback loop, I cannot. It's, it's just impossible. So that's a huge difference, which I think make it make these um, open or comments more um, well, real, reliable or uh, resistant to changes and uh, more uh, more easier for them to evolve, uh, to adapt and to take into account the evolution of society that we need. But, so, and if you see that, it's because you have automation on the day-to-day -day management, this is uh, the black uh, arrows, but you still have this idea of discussion, discursive management, which is very filtered for the policymaker only, but open to everybody, where you can always discuss the evolution of the rules, make them um, have a it's not a democratic, but a debate, at least, of where you are going, what's new, what we need, which is new, uh, do we still have the same to, to the, the, the tools we need, etc. So, coming back to the main discussion, I think that's my last slide. Um, I think, yes, comments are some sense different. Digital comments are comments with some variations. The but they raise a lot of questions we have had before about who manage the comments, what the, the responsibility is. And there was interesting question as well about the management, the collective management of this group and how it could evolve. And uh, I'll take the question of open the debate. Thank you very much. Thank you. You start from a uh, interesting question, which is uh, what justifies the production of knowledge? And then, of course, literally change the definition of who is consumer and who is the producer. But you start from the question what justifies uh, the production of this knowledge that uh, has no reward uh, inherent in it? Um, and, then, uh, and then you um, ask yourself another question that is um, how can we interpret Wikipedia as a common? even though it does not um, respond to the criteria that you, you usually need to define a good <coughs> or uh, a common pool good. Uh, in fact, uh, um, given that it's probably a uh, uh, non-rival but exclu excludable good, uh, what you find in your initial analysis is that uh, uh, Wikipedia in your initial analysis really fits the idea of a cloud good. Um, now, you solve all this, uh, by changing the definition of uh, consumer and producer, which is very practical from the point of view of uh, addressing your puzzle, uh, but leaves us with two problems. The first is that you really do not have, unless you assume that everything in the system is a bargaining uh, process, you don't have a produce production anymore. Who is producing what if the uh, users are all uh, consumers? So unless you assume a bargaining process of some type, um, everything, everyone is a consumer who produces. But also, uh, by doing this switch, you lose, I think, the pretty interesting uh, starting question that you had. What motivates uh, the production um, of a good when there is no reward for such production? And I think it is a bit sad that you, throughout uh, your discussion you lose out uh, that question because it's a very interesting one. And um, I might offer a suggestion in there that is, if we look at other human behavior, for instance, uh, um, environmentalist behavior, we find a lot of cases where people act or produce or uh, change the way they produce um, with actions that do not immediately produce a reward. And when, when they do so, well, they usually do so when there is a revealed externality 
that an individual tries to theorize. So maybe here we are observing the same thing. You don't need to go through a change in definition of who is the producer or who is the consumer. You just need to think about a revealed externalities. Maybe um, the um, producers in Wikipedia think that the lack of knowledge is a negative externality, while diffusing knowledge produces positive externalities. If that's the case, you do have a systemic wide reward to production because there is a positive externality. So you don't need to change the uh, logic of who is consumer and who is producer in order to answer your initial question. Um, so um, I would like you to look at maybe a little bit uh, in this um, direction and think whether you really need to switch. Uh, because it seems that you start from the prior that Wikipedia is a common, and then try, they try to play with the definitions in order to uh, you know, show that reality fits with your prior. Uh, but there might be easier ways around. Easier ways around. Well, um, no, I think, no, my, my, my key point was that the thing that um, if you look at um, the, the problem of the fact that producing knowledge should be incentive, you cannot understand, first of all, why people do that and uh, how the Wikipedia works. My point of view was saying, in fact, you do not have to incentive, to give incentive to people to produce knowledge. So somehow I concur with you. Well, you can explain why is it that you don't need that, but it's a very point of view. I'm mean, less um, optimistic about humanity maybe than you are. I think that it's really private, egoistic reason which makes that I want to produce knowledge because I lack that. And you solving this makes that you can start studying Wikipedia and discussing the fact that the problem in Wikipedia is not how you start producing knowledge or why you or why you need to incentivize people to produce knowledge. In fact, the problem is how you control the kind of knowledge that people want to produce. Because the fact the problem of Wikipedia is not having people contribute. The problem of Wikipedia is having people contributing accordingly to the Wikipedia or to uh, something which makes sense. Because you could have somehow, you could have, let's, let's speak of abortion. You could have an article about abortion is bad, another article about abortion is good. I explicitly take something where well, I think there is no debate on that, but if you are Wikipedia, you have to take all these problems. So you have to, and people want to contribute, as a time want to contribute on that. So the problem of Wikipedia is not having people contributing and incitate people to contribute. As you said, you may have some good reason or I would say external or internal reason. But to make that, if they want to contribute, at the end, you have just one article about abortion, which somehow respects the main rule of Wikipedia. So, scientific or backed by science, etc. Uh, being, uh, you have several rules. So that's the real problem of this group, and that's why I think we can speak of uh, comments, is that you don't want to control or to incitate knowledge production, you want to control the production of knowledge and to, uh, right, to, yeah, to, to, to try, I don't know if I answer the question, but to me, that was something very important at the beginning. Um, and yes, somehow it may be biased because I want to, well, I have this question of Wikipedia speaking of as a comment. So I wanted to try to understand if we can really speak of Wikipedia as a comment. But, on the other hand, making this exercise, I think it's very important to uh, not forget what at the core of the problem is. And the core of the problem is not discussing about why people do that, or how we would like to incentivize at the, the beginning. That somehow is solved. People want to contribute. And our problem is not to, to, to our problem is to organize this contribution. To monitor this contribution and make this contribution something which is which works. 
And that's the core of this uh, all this thing. So I, I don't yeah, I don't know what we answer. Okay, basically. you can keep the follow-up for this. Okay, okay. That's <laughs> yeah, do it. Uh, thanks also for myself for the, for the very interesting talk. I'm, I'm very much interested in the last part about algorithm management because I'm a computer engineer. And uh, um, I wanted to know whether uh, the key problem here is that bots are owned by uh, the algorithm owner that are not the policy makers. There is a delegation of power, right? If I well understood your, 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 your skill. And I come what, back to, to this graph. In fact, yes, exactly. yeah, yeah. Yes. what I didn't understood, I would be curious to know, how would you change the, the, the current status of management in order to, to fix the problem of, uh, um, well, of algorithm management? That yes. Is, yeah. Uh, once again, so I think my, my point of view is that if you want to fix the problem of algorithm management, you, you, you have to acknowledge that you will have always a problem with algorithm management. It will never be perfect. So you always need to have feedback loops, human management. But what Wikipedia does, if you look at that, is that you have these policy makers and you have this algorithm owner. But in fact, the algorithm owner is one is part of the policy makers. Is one of them. Okay, they're not distinct. Separate. No, are not okay. actually. It's one of the person who controlled the contribution and has designed this tool to help him doing his job. It's not a job. Easily, etc. But he has always to justify or to discuss. Is so he is doing the thing and the, uh, the programming and is he owns the bot. But he has always to discuss his boss actions with his peers, his other colleagues. Somehow his, his, he on his board are always under supervision by the others because the, both the, the, it, the, the board and uh, its programmation or its, its rules implemented well, represent uh, the policy makers, their vision of Wikipedia and their actions. But the boards themselves, they are not digital commons, right? No, 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 no. In, in the the sense that manage, no, no, no. It's a tool within the uh, social technical organization which makes the social Do, do you think that changing uh, the management, the production, the way of production of the bots could uh, help improving uh, the, uh, the effects, the needed, uh, uh, the, the effects of using uh, the bots? So, well, the problem of the, I haven't time to, to, to talk about, but the problem of these policy makers, once again, it comes back to the question of uh, comments that policy makers have few types. So if you want to allow access to the consumption to more people, you have to automate things because you cannot delegate, you can, yeah, it's, it's, they don't, it's not, they don't have enough policy maker to follow the, the growth of the Wikipedia. On the contributions. So you have to automate. So to allow people to contribute, you have to automate. But if you automate, you make the contribution harder. But uh, you can also make the automation uh, in a collective way. I mean, an open source project. Yeah, yeah. Of, yeah. And, and some of the votes are made for the open source. Yeah. Way. Yeah. yeah, but somehow it may be more dangerous because Why? more people are owning the vote. So more people will be uh, complacent uh, with the board decisions. So the fact that there is one person owning the board makes that all the other can tell to this person, well, your boards are doing bad things, are, doing, uh, are, are not working as we want it to, to do, and he has to justify to defend his board. If everybody, all the policy makers program the board, who controls the policy maker? Or who controls the bot? Or the, the bot owners? You see, it's good to have people who are against the bot because you have this discussion system where you have to reach a consensus and it's good to have different points of view. <coughs> the bot is enforcing the rules um, for the day to day production in order to give time to the policy maker to discuss to debate, 
on the rules and how they, on how they are enforced by the rules. So it provides the time for the policymaker to keep on uh, discussing, debating, controlling the rules. So it's a, it's a bargain between uh, making the life harder for the contributors in order to let to allow the contributor to contribute in a system which is becoming bigger. So if there is no so I don't know, I don't know. Open source would well make that more people would uh, react or, or um, make the changes and I, I'm the sure that, is, is, is collective. Yeah, yeah. Yes. But I don't know if it's good or bad, but it's a very interesting question to see if collective ownership makes that the discrepancy uh, and the users are treatly, uh, treated fairly. <coughs> Because uh, once again, the, the source code is, uh, is available for the book. So it's, it's but not everybody can check it. Yes. Yeah, yes. Okay, yes. check, but cannot act on it. No. no. I guess no. this is the. No, no. But there are books uh, mm -hmm. used in Wikipedia who are, who are open source and, uh, and the terms are collective development. Okay. But it's a question of. Well, when, uh, when you were mentioning copyleft, I wanted to remind you that about 20 years ago, uh, the Nexus Center has been launching the Italian version of uh, uh, Creative Commons. So this is something well, about us. Yeah. Uh, about the incentives, I, I think the most interesting for me part has been the last one about uh, algorithmic management. For us lawyers, uh, it's the time of implementation of Article 17 of the Digital Single Market Directive. And we do have lots of problems with uh, algorithmic filtering. The European Court of Justice decided uh, April 23 uh, last year, uh, but uh, this is uh, not the final word. So for us, it's extremely important what we are working. And it's not immediate for us lawyers to look also at this side. Uh, so thank you for this. This has been extremely interesting. A few notes about uh, the contents of what you said. Um, <coughs> bibliographically, I would suggest uh, looking at the old work by Jochai Benkler, sharing nicely in uh, Yale Law Journal 2002, and he has a, an explanation which is reinforcing what has been said here. About incentives, we think about people who are not only uh, profit... You mentioned yeah, 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 the yeah. word of... Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. mentioned the book the from yeah. 26. Yes, yeah. I, this is my second quotation oh. by Benkler. <laughs> uh, but the first one is interesting because it's not obvious. He thinks incentives, we think about uh, business people, but here we're talking about amateurs. So we are talking about people who have exactly the attitude you described so, so well, uh, an inclination to share because this is what they're doing. Maybe they have a day job and in the evening they write novels or they have a day job teaching classes and then write articles and want to share it with the students, with the peers. So they are not really professional. Maybe they are a mix between amateurs. And this is the question of incentives is very much changed by this. And the other thing which Yochai developed in the Penguin and in the Leviathan, which is the book minor book by uh, Becker, but a very interesting one. He's talking about reciprocity. This is something you did not mention. Reciprocity, uh, to my students, I always say, um, I give an example of me uh, writing an article about a football player in Juventus uh, 50 years ago, because I was passionate about Juventus and about Cilesinho was a very good player at the time. And I know a lot about him, and not many people know about him. Why should I do this? Because I expect there is a reciprocation. If I take my time, I think that Mendler has a good point about the reciprocity. So, yeah, no, no, I, I just wanted to finish. I found in, extremely interesting the point about production. 
in your model, who is producing what? People who are contributing are consumers. Uh, so who is doing which production? This is the first question. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, fair enough, I don't know. You maybe you know what I find is that uh, the same issue arises when you're talking about uh, statistics uh, and GNP gross national product. Jamie Love said quite appropriately, this should be reflected in uh, the statistics in GDP. The difficulty is that uh, we don't have a clear conceptual. If you have Encyclopedia Britannica, you said 100,000 copies for. Uh, one three thousand pounds each. You know what is the value because it's market value. Here we know that the value is the same, and as you showed, in many cases more. But we don't have an exact price tag. So how does it go into statistics? So yeah, I, I want yeah address the question of consumer. So um, in marketing, there are forms of the term prosumer, and the idea that yeah. yeah. In fact, what you consume is the art of production. Uh, well, maybe you are frightened of this uh, Michel Platini uh, yeah. in an act of uh, passion. So you were happy to. This was not Platini, what this No, I know. 40 years before. Much in Italy, France, so it's a bit uh, <laughs> tough in this time. But uh, what I, I, I wanted to. Thread is that for these people, as per Marcos in the 17th century, what the pleasure was in the production and the consumption was in the production. So the, there is no, um, in fact, that's why I, I don't want to, I want to, to take back the idea of how do we produce knowledge. Uh, the production of knowledge is a problem. So we have incentive. No. In fact, people, uh, uh, the problem, no. Once again, the production of the knowledge which is consumed is a problem. And we have to somehow make the consumer helping the producer to produce because uh, otherwise, that's a question of a pretty uh, good dilemma, we would not have the way of these free ideas, etc. What I'm trying to, trying to say is that no, it's, it's, in fact, it's not true. We don't have free riders. Or in these cases, the free riders are those who are going to use Wikipedia um, to defend their ideas and without respecting what the goal of Wikipedia. So, uh, uh, not um, defending ideas or opinions that are not based on facts or scientific point of view. This is not what Wikipedia asks. And so, these are the free riders because they make Losing time to everybody within Wikipedia. But the free riders are not those who are not producing. The free riders are those who are producing badly, uh, etc. But we don't have any problem about knowledge production, in fact, or this idea that we have to incentivize people to produce knowledge for the consumer. In fact, it's vice versa. People, people produce knowledge because they are happy to do so. Yes, I've mentioned that somehow in the production process they discover that they could have feedback, so they have degree and process they are wanting to produce. I'm pretty sure that most of the time it's not anticipated. You don't produce to have feedback, but you produce because you are so passionate by this football players that you wanted to have your ideas in order and to show that it's important, it is important, and to make the definite uh, article on him. And you have discovered that you have some feedback. Maybe you are reconstructing the history. Maybe not. Maybe you are you wanted the feedback. But somehow you have an incentive to produce. You don't need money to come into that. And that comes back to my this, your second point of view, GDP. Well, so GDP is an economic indicator, right? So it's a measure of value of something of wealth. It is, it is a, um, a translation of value into monetary equivalent. Do we have as, a, as people, as a humanity or society, to translate everything into monetary equivalent? Is it that important? Is it, um, and why, why? 
And what would be the impact on this kind of, of uh, project? I'm pretty sure that there are lots of examples of uh, voluntary uh, actions or non-monetary rewarded actions, which has been uh, destroyed uh, by the fact that money, money comes into actions. So it could be as different to start to, to evaluate the, the, the cost of, or the, the, the value of this position. So I'm very, well, not very, well, I don't agree with Richard in the idea is that we have to, to say that it's a monetary value. We see that it has a social value, that Wikipedia has a social value, social impact, etc. I don't, I'm not sure that they need even more, even monetary equivalent to... to, to let, let, me, uh, let me specify my point. Uh, first of all, statistics is a very recent uh, construct. I think uh, we're talking about uh, 70 years ago, Samuel Kuznets uh, and this kind of uh, economic historians started to create statistics of GND, GNDP. So this is not a dogma. And it was done on for certain purposes. And you have to stick to what are the purposes. And it's certainly true that in some cases, if you put the price tag uh, on some good or activity like a kidney donation, uh, you're destroying uh, the activity. So uh, one has to be careful uh, every time one puts a price tag on something which did not have a price tag. Uh, the theoretical value of the point, which not, not myself, but uh, Jamie Love was uh, making, uh, is uh, that uh, in fact, uh, we feel uh, that our societies uh, are getting poorer and poorer because the GND, GNDP is going down. In Italy, it's especially clear. We had the worst performers in the last decade all over the West. But in some way, I personally feel, and I think that this was his feeling as well, that we are poorer in a way and richer in another way. So maybe this uh, commons uh, are a compensating factor and i'm not talking about putting a price tag but in some way in our perception of the welfare we have uh, we should start to think about it uh, because these contributions uh, are contributions also to the level of our well-being in some way. It's a bit confused what I'm saying. No, but no, that's pretty clear to me. Like I thought, it's pretty clear. It's about, um, uh, for me, in the end, it's about using a, 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 a measure um, as a goal. It, that's true that if our goal, society's goal is to have a best GDP, it's a problem. But should not we create other indicators? But it's, it's, it's a known fact that more or less the happiness and the wellness of a society and the health is connected to GDP up to a point. And then yeah. they don't show nothing. And well, why? Do we really need to be richer? Or all these kind of uh, activities, and it comes back to the, um, uh, the question of um, universal um, revenues, etc. All yeah. these questions, you're right. If people have more time, some of them are doing nothing. Others are contributing to Wikipedia. Are, as a society, work better in the end of the day? Nobody knows, I think. Uh, is measuring this kind of contribution, uh, would measuring this kind of help having a better vision of that you have all these associations. The time people spend uh, on, um, on the basketball, uh, my son's basketball uh, um, club, it's not, it's not money. But you have all these collective activities, non monetary collective activities, which have always existed, um, has decreased a bit, maybe, I don't know, maybe liberalism, etc. Uh, so it's very hard to know if um, measuring it or translating them into monetary indicators helps in the end make the society 
working better with it, so called. Or um, defending better uh, the action of people. That's great macroeconomic questions. But uh, it's, I think that's the most important. Uh, but uh, frankly, here I'm way behind my competency. And I, I, I would not Mine be able to get. Uh, Mine as well. Um, but yeah, yeah, I agree. In the end, it's uh, the idea of defending how we can help them without destroying them. Okay, we have uh, 13 more minutes before the end, uh, at, no, at the most. Uh, let me introduce you to Professor Stefano Sacchi, he is the director of uh, Teseus, a new research center at the Polytechnic on, on Technology, Humanity, and Society. And um, he arrived a little later after oh, our round table, so he will okay. introduce himself, so I can do this now. And I, I saw him taking notes uh, furiously during his talk, so. No, no, but simply, I, I don't know whether, whether I mean, this is still relevant or it, 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 it has been uh, superseded by events, but, um, and, and also, I mean, uh, I, I bet too much uh, Juventus for, you know, from <laughs> Cinesino and Michel Patini, so I, I, I felt the urge to uh, <laughs> designate. Um, you know, I mean, I, I still think that, uh, you know, um, I mean, you, you may think that, um, any any source of uh, behavior or or or, or incentive, uh, you know, anything goes. I mean, it's it's not relevant for. I still think it is the nature of, uh, uh, you know, participation is relevant at least for the uh, you know self-correcting uh, 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 character mm -hmm. of the of the collective endeavor. Um, so it may see, it may look like uh, you, you mentioned also in, in some of your of your. Uh, uh, it, it may look like a, a counter Olsonian, you know, uh, process with the small the consumers that are you know willingly possibly exploited by 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 the users mm -hmm. of the large groups. Whereas I, I think it is uh, you know they 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 have a selective uh, incentives. Uh, they do. I mean, uh, and, and it, it's possibly participation. A la Hirschman, okay? They are happy in uh, being part of the loop or participating. I think it's more, you mentioned there's something like reputation mm -hmm. or, or uh, recognition, or it may be reciprocity, um, but it's probably, or, or it is a recognition or a reputation. But I think this is, so participating in it, you know, enhances their, uh, they want to be uh, recognized, enhances their uh, reputation. I think it makes a difference the kind of incentives uh, people have in, in participating in, in, in this, uh, uh, because of quality or uh, you know inclusiveness. So the, the self-correcting mechanism, uh, how it works. I think it is guaranteed by reputation. I'm not sure it is guaranteed by other uh, incentives. If I'm making myself understood, I mean. If somebody writes, you know, uh, or, or, or this takes the path of a Nazi or a racist, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, Wikipedia, as it were, um, many people will quit because they don't want to be associated with that. And, and that is a self-correcting mechanism. Otherwise, it may lead to, to something like a bad equilibrium of, uh, you know, something of a Steve Bannon uh, yeah. uh, kind and, and, uh, and, uh, and other mechanisms, uh, other, sorry, incentives uh, do not guarantee this kind of self, self correcting mechanism. What, what do you think? Yeah, no. well, to make my point extremely clear and to come back as well to open source software where you have no monetary or business uh, thing at play uh, directly. What I want to explain, and it was not very clear in my presentation, I realized that is that you have people which are in control of the project. Mm -hmm. And there are several goals, or idea of where the project has to go. Um, that would be the, for the software, uh, the, um, the, the, the development path or, uh, of the, well, the functionality they want to develop, etc. So where the, the project goes. And they propose this goal to people. And so people come in, and in fact, what the project does with all the tools is to curve or to make or to, 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 to bargain with these people uh, between what they want to do and what they, they are allowed to do within the project. So you have, you have your vision of uh, Juventus. 
And uh, somehow the project tells you, yes, but you cannot write that because uh, it may be true, on, because it's not true, because it's not proven. All these are the, as a basis of the project. So somehow what a project like that does is to uh, force, uh, it's, a, it's a discussion between you want to contribute, you have to contribute <coughs> by the way. So you, yes, you have incentive, and the bigger, the, the more the, uh, visible the project is, the more people you have wanting to pro um, to with different backgrounds. So the harder would be the project about making the road that's respective about what you want to do. So it's always uh, between what you want and what you can kind of project. I don't know if that makes my point clear, but it's very profound about the motivation to contribution, I agree with you, and the fact that the project will do well. If you want to contribute, you cannot make the project 100% your point of view. You have to accept that we are going to tell you what is possible from what is not. And in open and software, it's about this kind of directions of the project, but also about different companies who are somehow using this space, which is not monetary, to discuss or to negotiate some kind of uh, tools they need, they all need, some kind of inter technical interrelations they all need to, uh, to, to do their business then, later on. But that's why well, you have Microsoft discussing or with Google, contributing with Google, because they agree on having this compromise. In the end, it's a compromise. And in the end, the project managers are telling the other people, you have to accept our compromise, the rules of the compromise. <coughs> and we are deciding if you are contributing or you are compromising enough or not. If you don't agree about this basic fact that you have to compromise and you, well, to, uh, to, to accept that you have to change your point of view, in the deal, justified by the rules, well, you are out. But, period. And that is so important to say that the problem of this is to deal with contribution, not to, to have contribution, is to, at one point, at the beginning it's to have contribution, I agree. But at one point is to have the contribution in accounts to how the project works or what you want. And so I agree with you about the fact that uh, there are different kind of incentives and so different kind of environment. Uh, but there are, you have people so some people are paid, even in Wikipedia, to contribute to Wikipedia. But they know that they have to contribute in a way that it is acceptable for Wikipedia. You cannot have thought that you have some um, uh, MPs or Italian MP who wanted to contribute to have these pages on Wikipedia, rewrite them, etc. And the answer was, no, no. You, you may say that, but you haven't proof of that. Or you have said that. 10 years ago. You cannot say that you haven't said that 10 years ago. You may say on Wikipedia that today you don't agree what we have said, you have said 10 years ago, but you have said it. So it keeps, it will stay on Wikipedia. Period. That's the rule. If you don't agree on that, anyway, you won't be able to contribute to Wikipedia. And that's where it's a problem, a social problem as well, is that if Wikipedia is the reference, uh, uh, can we make them accountable or accepting for them to accept some social decision or democratic decision? Uh, the same for software. If software are so important, can, uh, how we guarantee that the producer or the collective production is done accordingly? It's maybe a second best in terms of it's open, as you said, the source is available, some other people can contribute, etc. But in the end, it's always the project manager who say, that's okay, that's not okay. That's the goal of the project. I don't know if I have anything yeah, to Yeah, sure, project. sure. Uh, my, my, my point would then be that uh, even that evolves, right? And how does it evolve? I mean, the rules are not uh, cast in stone and they no. may evolve. They are that's socially constructed. That's, 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 that's uh, 
as the, the weakness as well as the strength of this kind of comment is that you have different people discussing the evolution. And so it's, I think it's more it's messier than a straight on a, that's a, the vision and there you go. But somehow it's closer to our society. So maybe in Europe we work not as well as China, but somehow we are maybe more adaptable because we bargain, we discuss, we evolve. And in the end, well, it, have, it, it works. It works. Not that. Not very efficient. That goes through, I mean. Yes, you see what, and the, uh, it's the same for Wikipedia, textile, people, but they, they always have <coughs> you, and they discuss, etc. Thank you. And uh, so it's um, this discussion system is what uh, makes Wikipedia working and uh, the developing uh, for 20 years. And Linux and Web, we have this idea of the Linux power deciding everything, etc. But it's a bit more difficult. We have contributors and we have subtasks, etc. So it's a, it's a it's always compromising and uh, um, well, but okay. it's one of the comforts of being participating in, in the meetings at the Nexus Center is that we are absolutely sure that we will never go late. <laughs> Therefore, the <laughs> meeting is over. Thank you again to our guests. Thanks to you.